And good morning, church. How are you doing today? Friends, I'm so happy that you are here today. My name is Watanak King. It is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Also welcome friends who are worshiping with us online, whether you are on our Facebook page or on our church website or on our YouTube channel. I pray that the Spirit is with you as you are joining with us in time of worship together. Friends, please remember this is a very great time for us to really focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. We decided to come here today because we want to spend this time in worship with our Lord. Because we know that He loves us so very much and we want to give back our love to Him. We are here because we want to surrender our life completely to His plan. Amen? And I think we are here because we want to listen to our God. Maybe God is going to speak to you today. Maybe God is going to open your heart a little wider. Maybe God is going to nudge you to move forward, to take a step closer. Maybe God is going to challenge you to do great and powerful and mighty thing to change this world, to make this world a better place. Amen? Amen. Hey, friend, I'm so excited. Today's service, we plan everything just for you. We pray that through the scripture, through the prayer time, through the time that we sing together, through the time that we fellowship with one another, that you will encounter the Spirit of God wherever you are, whatever you are doing. So, are you ready to worship? Yeah. All right, friends, before we worship together, let me say this. Today, I think it's very, very important. Iona Mia is with us, and today is her birthday. And she is 95 years old. That's amazing. Iona is with us today. Hey, before we bring the acolyte in, can we sing happy birthday to her? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, that's it. Friends, are you ready to worship? Yeah. The acolytes brought the light of Christ among us all. The Spirit of God is with us all. Friends, so I invite you to really pay attention. The Spirit of God is going to work to you, in you, and through you today. So be ready for it. Without further ado, I would like to invite our awesome liturgists to help us in time of worship. Sonny? Good morning, church. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Call to worship will be done responsively. Come and learn the ways of life. We have come to follow Jesus. Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. We have come to follow Jesus. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who persecute you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We have come to follow Jesus. Come and learn the ways of life. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen now the scriptural lesson is taken from luke chapter 6 reading from verse 27 through 38 if you're able you may stand But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone 
who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do, do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For, that, for the measure you give will be the measure you will get back. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. And now I would like to invite all the children to come up for a time of children moment. Come on, everybody. Yeah, please come. Please come, come on. We have a lot of children here. All right, come on up. Let's give them a big round of applause, friends. Woo! We have a lot of children in our midst, and the children group continue to grow. Don't you like that? Yeah. Oh, they're not just only growing in number, but they're also growing in size, they're growing in age, and they're maturing each and every day. We have some more uh, row around here if you would like to come down here. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. I hope you will find a great time here in this time of worship together. All right, friends, let me show you this picture. Okay, let me show it to the camera first. Camera, can you get it? I was trying to print in color, but it didn't come out in color, black and white, but that's okay. What do you see? What do you see this picture? You can pass it around. A heart, a heart, right? A heart. When you think about a heart, what do you think about? Love. Love, right? That's awesome. Let's, let's hear from that side. Who do you love? You love your mom? Who else? You love your family? Okay. Yes, Michael? You love your grandma? Okay, great. Who else? Yes. You love your grandpa too? Great. Who else? You love your grandpa too. How about little girl? Who, who, what do you say? You love your siblings. Yeah. Who else do you love? Good. Yeah. What? Who do you love? Your family, right? Right. Who else? How about your friends? Right. How about your neighbor? How about your church members? Yeah. Do you love them? Can we say we love you? Hey, that's good. See, we love each other so much, right? That's good. What do you want to say? You love your mom too. That's right. That's right. That's good. Right? Why do we love these people? Because they love us back, right? We love our friends because our friends love us. We love our siblings because our sibling loves us. We love our parents because our parents love us so much right we love our grandparents because they love us so very much but do we love some friends who are not so good to us do we love some friends who tell lies about us 
Do we love some friends who are kind of mean, mean to us? You know, sometimes when we are going to a recess, right? When we are at school having recess, some friends are not so good to us. They are not so nice. Do we love them? The Bible today, in the Bible today, Jesus reminds us to love even those who does not love us. I know it is very hard, but that is how we demonstrate God's love to others. You know, Jesus loves us unconditionally, and therefore Jesus asks us, who are the disciples of Jesus, who are the followers of Jesus, to love even those who don't like us. I know it is hard, but that is another way to win enemies to become friends, to make those who don't love us to eventually love us. And now we have more friends, right? We have more friends whom we can play with. We have more friends whom we can talk to, right? We, we, we do that because it is the good example to everybody else. You know, the world tells us that just only love those who love you. But Jesus brings us to another level, to love even those who do not love us. That was so a good example to the world. Can you imagine if everybody loves everybody? The world would be so much more peaceful. Do you agree? And so, let us pray to God, allow God to change our life, and make us love everybody around us. Okay? Can you bow our heads and pray with me? I'm going to pray for you all. Friends, I invite you to raise your hand up to our children here today. Pray for them in whatever language you, you can speak right now. Pray in silence or pray loudly. Go ahead and pray for our children. Lord Jesus, it is easy to love those who love us. And today we ask you to help us to love our enemies so that they might know that we are your children. Lord, help our children here as they go and live life in the world. May they show your love to all their friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, friend. You guys are so participating, uh, participating so well. Thank you. Well behaved. Give them a big round of applause. Yeah, that's amazing. As we prepare for the sermon, let's sing hymn number 164, Come My Way, Truth, My Life. <laughs> the music team don't you like the music today i think it's pretty good thank you thank you thank you thank you today i would like to let you know that we will receive two new families into our church membership 
We will not do it in our English service. We will do it formally in our Hmong language service right after the service. We have one family who are here with us. is Leela, uh, Sue, Sue's daughter and with her children. She is here today with us. And we also Leela, we have Leela's and her children with us. Leela is, is um, Addie's sister who just moved from Merced into our Fresno area. And uh, Katria has been with us so far and they would like to be a part of the family of Memorial United Methodist Church. So we are growing, friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited, you know, as we continue to, to grow spiritually, numeric, numerically, numer numerically, right? Yeah, that the number, the quality, the quantity, you name it, right? All that is, is welcome. I'm so happy. I actually have a lot of others... Um, uh, membership certificates uh, to those who became members in last year. We now have really four more beautiful thank you to Destiny who made this uh, membership certificate to, to our members. So that's amazing. Wow. I think that's probably the most exciting and pleasant news for especially minister, right? Who continue to receive new member in the church. That's just amazing. Don't you like it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, and we can do all this. We can do all this because of all your help, right? Because we are on this one mission together. We love each other because God loves us, and there is nothing we can do about it. I love you, Jesus loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Amen? Amen. All right, before I start my sermon, I tell a little funny story. And today is about a little girl. So... The mom decided to bring the little girl to church and she wanted the little girl to see all the things going on at church. So she came, sat right in the front row. See, this front row, nobody's sitting in here. What's going on, right? Because the front row, you will be able to see everything firsthand. And today, it happens that the preacher is going to, to baptize an infant baby. So during the baptism, the preacher take a cup of water and pour it onto the baby's head, right? As an act of baptism. The little girl turned to her mom and said, why are they brainwashing the baby? <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. <laughs> now I invite you to be in a time of silent prayer and prayer. I invite you to find your feet on your floor, sit comfortably, adjust your posture right now, find your hands on the laps or on the pew, relax your shoulders, relax all your facial muscles, breathe deeply and slowly, breathe in God's grace, breathe out. God's praise. Remember where you are right now. Remember that the Spirit of God is right next to you, is with you, is speaking to you right now. I invite you to pray. To pray for the prayer request that we just heard this morning. To pray for our world peace. Pray for our faith community, Memorial United Methodist Church. Pray for our youth ministry, our children ministry, our men ministry, our women ministry, and all other ministries that is happening in our church. Pray for our Sunday services. Pray for your friends and your loved ones. Pray for your pastor and his family as well. Pray for our bishop, the district superintendents. Pray for our United Methodist Church in the world. Lord Jesus, we want to surrender our lives to you today. Lord, may this act of worship be acceptable in your sight. We love you so very much, Lord. And I pray that today 
you will speak to us. Speak to us individually. Change us, Lord. Change our hearts, O Lord. Make us anew. Mail us and mold us and make us to become the person that you want us to be. And Lord, may today the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture that you just heard today is a continuation of the scripture that you heard from last week. In the book of Luke, we call it the Sermon on the Plain. If we were in the book of Matthew, we would call it the Sermon on the Mount. It has similar story, but the Sermon on the Plain, the message is really plain. Right into the heart of the message. Last week, we started to hear how Jesus was teaching his disciples and his followers something that is interesting, something that is new. Especially, he blessed them all. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the hungry. Blessed are those who are weeping. Blessed who are being hated by others. Because following Jesus is not that easy. They were being persecuted because now they are following somebody that is not the same as the rabbi. That is not the same as the previous religious leaders that preach something different, that preach something radical, that preach something very inclusive. And today, the continuation of the story, and you've heard this story so many times, this is the Christian ethic. This is the Christian principle. This is what made Christians so unique for the world. This is what makes Christians shine in the world, wherever we are. At our workplace, at our school, at our home, at our community, when we go, we carry this ethic. The command is, love your enemies. This is impossible. How can you love your enemy? There's no way I can do it. And I think even the first centuries follower of Jesus thought the same thing. Jesus, are you serious? Why would I have to go and love my enemy? There is no way. No way, Jose. Cannot do that. Cannot. Sorry. It's difficult. It's impossible. But then, but then probably some of the, some of the followers were, thought, were thinking, it's for a short time. Yeah, you know, Jesus is going to leave us for a moment. He'll probably come back next year. He will judge the world. And therefore, in this interim time, we can't just love our enemies. We have to do our best. It's not going to be forever. It's only temporary. We have to go and love our enemy even. Right? But then, Jesus has not coming back yet. It sounds like love your enemy is not temporary. It's forever. It's forever. But then when I was listening to this message, I was thinking Jesus is trying to encourage his followers who are going through hard times, who are being persecuted, who are being ridiculed, who are being criticized by, by telling them, guys, take it easy. Don't worry about it. Our mission is bigger than that. Our mission is greater than that. It is not about this place, but it's about the kingdom of God. We want others to feel the salvation of God. We want others to experience the love of God. We want others to experience the forgiveness of God. So forget about those who criticize you. Let us not allow those enemies to stop you from moving forward. In other words, it sounds almost like Winston Churchill who once said, you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. Right? I think Jesus is saying, come on, man. Don't worry about it. That's okay. We can move forward. I am with you. My spirit is with you. You are courageous. You will be able to do this. Let's go on. Let's move on. Let's change the world one person at a time. And we can do this together. I think that's what Jesus is saying. But you know, when I look at it even further, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 20, 
This is Apostle Paul who really fell in love with Jesus and studied the message and the story of Jesus. And he once wrote to the Romans by telling them, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Oh, ill intent if you are talking about it. I think, I think Paul has his point. I understand Paul's point, right? When we love the enemy, when the enemy is thinking, what did just happen to me? I treat this person so bad, but this person turned to me with love. Ow, that hurts. How can I, how can I destroy this person's ethic? This person's ethic is so big, it's so strong. I cannot do this. It hurts me even worse when I try to hurt, when I try to hurt the person. I understand his point. But I think, I think, Jesus didn't mean it. I don't think Jesus' teaching was having any ill intent behind it. Don't you agree? If you study the life of Jesus, his love is so unconditional. It's for everybody. His forgiveness is not just only for the Israelites. It's not just only for the Jews, but it's open to all to the Gentiles, to us all who are sitting here, to generations after generations. I think Jesus' forgiveness is so amazing. It's beyond our understanding. His compassion is so deep. It's so deep to the core. It's so wide. It's wider than anything that you can imagine. I don't think Jesus is teaching with ill intent. Go love your enemy because it's going to put a, a heap of burning coal on top of the head, up on top of their head. I don't think so. Don't you agree? Think about Jesus' life. Think about how Jesus even walked to the cross and get all the punishment, all the torture, just for each and every one of us to see salvation, to see hope, to receive God's blessing, to receive God's salvation for each and every one of us. It's so hard for me to see or to hear or to understand that Jesus is teaching to love your enemy with the ill intent of hurting them back. No. No. I think, I think Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. got it right. He said, love is the only thing that can turn an enemy into a friend. Don't you agree? I think that is what Jesus is teaching each and every one of us. That you even love your enemy because that is the only effective way to turn your enemy into your friends. Can you believe this? Can you imagine if our world leaders take this message into heart right now? Do we have to worry about what is going on in Ukraine and Russia? That is just difficult. If you do it to me, I'm going to do it to you back. Oh, I'm going to revenge. I'm going to go and show my power, show my strength. Man, listen to what Jesus is teaching. Love your enemy. I heard about a story of a country who were divided into two halves. And that country was divided with a wall. And then the people were taught to not like each other, to really hate each other, to take each other as enemy. So one side of the country decided to dump their trash into the other side. Whatever they have, the garbage, the trash, they load it up and they dump it over the wall to show how much they hate the other side. And then the other side decided to respond. They're now coming with trucks, truck load of food and drinking water and dump it to the other side. And the other side were coming and thought, what is going on here? I didn't treat them that way. I was provoking something, but it turned out they even brought more, but not trash, but food and drinking water. And that is what we need. Wow, that's amazing. And that heals the relationship. That brings 
the two halves of the country together. And then you heard about a story that the wall was torn down. Right? I think that is the love that Jesus is teaching to us. That you love your enemy so that one day your enemy will become your friends. I encourage you to think like that. To go out and love your enemy. Even those who don't like you. Even those who speak ill of you. Even those who, who might talk smack of you. But when you love them so much, your love will transform their heart. And you too will become friends to one another. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. amen. And then Jesus moved on by saying in verse 31, Do to others as you would have them do to you. What rule is this? The golden rule. Everybody say the golden rule. Do to others just like you want them to do to you. That's nice. Let's do this together. Let me even, even challenge you uh, a, a little deeper. They call it the platinum rule. You know what the platinum rule say? Treat others as they want to be treated. You see what I'm saying? Not just what you want to be treated, but they want to be treated. In our small group Bible study on Wednesday, on Wednesday night, we call it the transformation lab. I said, you know, if you were sick, and you were staying at home, you were feeling under the weather, you would like a nice bowl of spaghetti with meatballs served in your bedroom, right? And you're going to just enjoy it because you don't have to cook. But somebody gave you that and you love it so much, right? But then you heard your pastor is sick, it's under the weather, and you love your pastor so much, and so you want to treat, you want to treat your pastor just like you want to be treated. What do you do? You bring a bowl of spaghetti with meatball to your pastor. Great intent. Awesome. The golden rule. Let me challenge you to do the platinum rule. Because your pastor would rather love cheesecake than spaghetti meatball. Right? So treat him the way he wants to be treated. So how about don't bring the spaghetti meatball, replace it with cheesecake. Right? Or, or a bowl of fur, fur noodle, right? Fur soup. Mary make the best fur in the whole wide world. I mean, that's amazing. I eat so much fur since I became your pastor here. It's just amazing. You know what I'm saying? The platinum rule. Do that. Do that. Do that. And I know, I know, you all are full of God's grace, God's love, God's forgiveness. And you all love your community so very much. And I'm so thankful that you all do this to our community. I'm so thankful that God is working in your heart. I'm so thankful when God is showing through you, through your smile, through your word of encouragement, through your, through your generosity, through the time that you put together in this wonderful community, through the effort that you are trying your best to raise up our community so that our community can be vibrant in our local community here and also to the world. So that we can always say, Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest Methodist Church in the world. Hey, hey. Woo. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. And now we are tackling this one problem together. We are trying our best to bring a bright future to give dignity to give value to our youth group. Look at this picture. Don't you like that? They party, they eat chow mein, they eat uh, uh, orange fried chicken, sweet and sour chicken, they come together, they talk about their faith together. This is a safe place for them to do, to live, to belong, to grow together. Then when I study about the youth, I found an article written by Oklahoma State University, and they published it in one of their newspapers. Um, this is the five basic needs of youth. That is from the volume 102. It says five basic needs. Youth, young people need to belong. They're growing so much right now, and they're trying to understand who they are. They learn their value. They know who they are by thinking, by their thinking of who they are, and also by depending on others thinking as well. 
how do other people think about them? Do others think about them with dignity, with value, with importance? And therefore, that's how they feel. That's how they know who they are. They want independence. They're growing, right? They're growing. They know that one day they will have to start paying their own bills. That one day they will fall into this 30-year mortgage buying their own home, right? One year they will be uh, facing the world in this professional, uh, professional setting, going to work and everything. And they want to learn. They want to grow. They want to be independent. Help them do that. They want achievement. They want to, to do something, to do something for themselves as well as do something for others. So what are the opportunities for us that we can give to them so that they can achieve something, not just only for themselves, but for others as well, right? They, they, they need new experiences. Yes, they're growing. They're trying to learn. They want to know who they are, what they're good at, what they like, what they don't like. They need new experiences. And we, as the community of faith, coming together, trying our best to walk alongside with them, provide them their new experiences. Last but not least, affection. Affection. They want to be loved. Who don't want to be loved, right? Especially our young people. They are growing. They're trying to understand who they are. Do they mean anything? Does, do, uh, are they valued? How do people look at them, right? And their affection. Our, our affection toward them is so meaningful. We transform their life the way we love them or not. So here are you. This is what they do. This is what they need. What are we doing? And then in verse 38, the Bible says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will put into your lap and so friends we are here together so that we can meet the need of our young people right now let us do that because when we come together and meet their need god is going to return back to us press shaken together put it right in your lap and you will see the future of this youth who have been who have been led in god's way who have been taught the, the the teaching of our lord jesus christ who have been guided by the wonderful counselor youth director volunteers who help them to understand they are loved they are valued they are forgiven they have a lot of big future god has a big thing in store for them give them hope and one day they will be world changer let's give them a big round of applause Woo! i'm so excited to see them did you see our children sitting here do you see our you sitting over there i want some you sitting over here as well you see who they are they're growing they're going to be world changer one day they will become elon musk one day they will become you know whoever the astronaut the doctors and all that great future and maybe one day i will be replaced by our young people don't you like that hey hey hey, hey. have you ever seen maybe one or two or three of us three of them our young people have great future they will speak so well. They will be great preacher. They will be great pastor. Whoo! Wow, I'm, I'm so excited, right? Because, because our plan, our plan is to, to provide something like this. Next picture. Something like this. You know, a welcoming, a warm, bright, well-lit, safe place, environment where they can play their music together, or maybe they can gather to talk about their faith, or maybe they can just come and play their game, or maybe they can chill with the great guidance of the youth director that we will have in the near future, right? Something like this, right? Something like this. Our youth building might not show exactly what it is, but that is my vision. It's a well-lit, it's open space that the people, the youth can come and feel like they belong. They own it. They they paint the wall, they work at it, they take care of the building, and the building will be a great source for them. They invite their friends to come in, and their friend will come and bring their family as well, and they join us, and then we work together, and we help our community to grow and grow and grow and grow. Don't you think that is a great vision? Yeah. Can we do this together? Can I have an amen from everybody? And then, friends, when we can do this together, 
we all will be able to sing, How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And always see how great, how great is our God. Let us pray. God, you are so good. You are so great. Thank you for giving us that vision, the unity, the, the work together that we have, the mission that we all need to put our work together. We're going to take our whole responsibility. We're going to participate. We're going to make this place a better place. We're going to bring the kingdom of God here in this place, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you for your love, your guidance. Thank you for always have been and will be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, when you come in, you were given the communion element. Because, because, because every time we come together, we want to celebrate the Holy Communion. Because that is what Jesus told us to do. When Jesus brought his disciples together in the upper room, Jesus, before the dinner start, he broke the bread. And gave thanks to God. And gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you can in the remembrance of me. I invite you to open the first layer of the pre wrap communion element. The first layer, you will find the wafer. Eat the wafer. Remember the body of Christ broken for you. He saves us all. After the dinner, Jesus took the cup, the chalice, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this cup. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin. The second layer of the cup is a juice that you can drink. When you drink from the cup, please remember the blood of Christ shed on the cross to forgive us all. And when you do this, I ask you to think about the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, that it will transform you, that it will make you anew today. Now, friends, it's time for us to go to God in prayer. Take your time. The musician will lead us into a song. At this time, you may want to come to the communion rail, or you may want to go to the candlelight station over there. You light the candle, representing the light of Christ, shining wherever there is darkness. Pray to God. May this time be fulfilling to you. Friends who are worshiping with us online, you can also participate in Holy Communion. May the element be blessed wherever you are. You can have a form of carb, either rice or cracker or bread, and then a form of juice. And you drink it and remember that Christ's love is so amazing. He is good. Musician, please help us.
Friends, as we are here together today, I pray that you will continue to pray for our church. And especially for time like this, I ask that you will continue to support the ministry that we are working together. Thank you so much for your continual support to our church. You may continue to give by writing your check, send it to our church. We'll make sure the check is properly administered. You can also give online. Go to our United Methodist Church online or our website. You will be able to give either to our general fund or to our youth building fund. We have a button that you can donate specifically for our youth building fund. Same thing here, friends. If you would like to give to our youth building fund, please put in the memo so that our finance will know exactly where to allocate this, this money. We are working together, and we cannot do this without your support. I pray that you will continue to support the ministry of our church. People online, you can just simply aim your camera onto the barcode. It will lead you into the website where you can do uh, donate online. Isn't it amazing? You can just aim your phone camera into the QR code there. It will lead us to wherever you want to donate to our church. Thank you so much, friend. Would you please stand for a time of Dr. Doxology? How about a prayer dedication? Yeah, please stand for a time of the uh, prayer dedication. Let's say it together. Source of every blessing, as you send Joseph into Egypt to save the world from famine, you send Jesus into our lives to save us from selfishness and greed, for teaching us to treat others as we would have been treated us. We give you our thanks and praise. Bless these gifts that we have received from your bounty and send them forth to those in need, whether they be friends to a foe. For all are your beloved children and our sisters and brothers. Amen. Now let us sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise for the Son and Holy Ghost. Last hymn, they'll know we're Christians. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored. Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land, and they'll know. Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, we will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard human dignity and save human pride, and they'll know. Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Friends, 
while you're still standing, please receive the benediction. As you leave this place, you're going to enter into the servanthood, into the servanthood neighborhood, into a place that you can go and serve and shine the light of Christ to the world. No matter who they are, the one that you love, the one that you not so love, but you can always serve them. You can always show them love because Christ has called you to go and make this world a better place, one person at a time. And you can do all this because you know the Spirit of God is with you. Because our God is so good. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. This will conclude our service today. May the love of God be with you wherever you are. I'll see you next week. Thank you, friends, who are worshiping with us online. May God's blessing be with you as well. Amen. Amen.